I've decided that I'm going to quit my job at Han Academy, tell uh, Sal that I'm out of here, and I kind of need a backup plan, and the best backup plan I could come up with at the moment is that I'm going to play the lottery. I'm going to play the lottery every single day, and the day I win the lottery, I'm going to quit my job. Well, I kind of want to know what kind of statistics or probability govern such a case, and this is governed by a geometric distribution. So I tell Sal my idea, and he tells me that it's in my best interest to probably do some calculations. So I said, okay, I'm going to calculate the probability that I win the lottery on the first day I try. The probability that x is equal to 1. And I say, well, maybe just in case that doesn't work out, let me calculate the probability that x is equal to 2. I win the lottery on the second day. Maybe it's a Tuesday. Probability that x is equal to 3 in case, in case Monday and Tuesday don't work out, I might... Kind of be curious to see if I'm coming into work on Wednesday. And just to be safe, let's also look at the probability that x is 4, that I win the lottery on the fourth time that I try. So I should define my variable, and we've already kind of seen it, but I'm going to define x to be the day that I win the lottery. So Sal hired me because I'm good at math, so I find the best lotto in town, and it has a one one hundredth chance of winning the lotto. So that means the probability that I win on the f day one is one over a hundred. I kind of beat all the odds and I win the lottery. Now let's look at the probability that x equals two. So if I win the lottery on the second day, that means I must have lost it on day one, which means I need the complement of one over a hundred. The complement of one over a hundred is ninety nine over a hundred, and that's the probability that I lose. So I, I lose on day one. The probability I do that is 99 over 100, but then I have to win on day 2 because x is equal to 2. The probability that I win is 1 over 100. So if I multiply these two, I get the probability that I win on day 2. Next, let's look at day 3. So I have to lose on day 1. I do that with a chance of 99 over 100. I have to lose again on day 2, and that's also 99 over 100. And finally, because uh, x is equal to 3, on day three, I must win, and the percent chance that I win is one over 100, or one percent. So if I multiply these all out, I get the probability that I win on Wednesday. So let's end with kind of the probability that I win on day four, and there's four days, so I'm gonna make kind of four sets of parentheses. And as you can imagine, I can only win for the last one, so the first three must all be losses, and that's 99 over 100 for each. And 99 over 100. And the last day, I win the lotto, and the chance that I do that is always 1 over 100. So you can see kind of a pattern forming here, but I might not win the lottery on day 4 either. It could take me kind of day 5. It might even be kind of day 1,000. You might say, well, that's really unlikely that you lose 999 days in a row, and all of a sudden on day 1,000, you win the lottery, but it's also unlikely to kind of flip 100 coins consecutively and get a heads every single time, but it's still possible. So you see that x could really be any integer value. So let's go ahead and try to solve generally for the probability of x equal to any integer n. Well, I know that on the nth day, I'm going to win the lotto, so I'm going to go ahead and put 1 over 100. And the only thing I have to really fill in is how many 99 over 100s do I have? And I only have n days, and I know that on the nth day I kind of won the lotto, so I must have lost the lotto n minus 1 times. Simple enough, so kind of I lost the lotto n minus 1 times, and I won the lotto 1 time, so I get a total of n days. That's great. Now we can adjust this formula to be kind of general for any geometric distribution. Our 99 over 100 is our probability of failure. Our 1 over 100 is our probability of success. And we'll steal some of the notation straight from the binomial distribution that we covered in the last lessons. And our probability of success we can call lowercase p. And because they're complements, our probability of failure is just 1 minus p. When looking at things in the general sense, x goes from the day I win the lotto to the number of trials. Every single day that I tried to win the lotto was a single trial. So the probability that x is equal to n is the probability 
that it takes n trials for me to succeed. And that's the biggest difference between the geometric distribution and the binomial distribution, is in the geometric distribution, you stop playing after you have your first success. So let's just rewrite this using general variables. The probability that x is equal to n equals 1 minus p, the probability that I fail to the power n minus 1, because I fail n minus 1 times, times p. And I only succeed once. And that's it. We've, de we've derived the probability mass function for the geometric distribution. So now that I can calculate the probability that I win the lottery on any day n, I might ask myself, well, what's my expected value? On what date do I kind of expect that I'll win the lottery? And it's just kind of a complete question of intuition. If you have a 1 100th chance of winning the lottery on any given day, after how many days do you think it would take you to win the lottery? And it's exactly what you expect. It's 100 days. You just kind of flip the fraction. You'd say, well, after 100 days, of each day having a 1 100th chance of winning the lottery, I would expect to win the lotto exactly one time. So to get the expected value of x, you get 1 over p, or p to the minus 1, which is just flipping the probability of success. I'll quickly introduce the topic for the next lesson, and that's kind of this idea that I introduce this as a geometric distribution. And hopefully, as soon as you hear distribution and probability, a bell and a whistle go off in your head and say, well, if this is a distribution, it has to follow all the laws that distributions follow. And for any distribution, the probability that x equals 1 plus the probability that x equals 2 plus the probability that x equals 3, and you keep on going for all possible values of x, and when you add them all up together, you should get 1. And we know that for this geometric distribution, there's actually an infinite number of possible x values. And if I add them all together, I should get 1. And we'll see how that works in the next video.